Hey, what is going on guys? It is Young here and today I'm back on our Fortnite video and in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys the settings that I'm currently using and also just show you guys around the new settings that they put into the game and I'm going to go through all of them and fully explain exactly what they mean and exactly how to find the sensitivity that's going to work best for you. So definitely stay to the end of the video, I'm going to be covering all the new settings that they put into the game and just give my opinion and show you guys through all of the settings. And before we get into the video, I have a V-Bug giveaway. If you guys want a chance to win some free V-Bugs, all you guys have to do is to drop a like on the video. Make sure you guys subscribe to my channel and as well subscribe to my second channel. The link for that will be in the description or the pinned comment. Turn on my post notifications and as well comment down below your Xbox Gamer Tag, your PSN Gamer Tag, or Epic account. And as well, if you guys would like to support me in the item shop, all you guys have to do is go over to the item shop, go down to support a creator, type in my code, my code is YoungHumor, and you guys will have me added and supported as a creator. I really do appreciate all you guys who do add me, and alright guys, let's go right to the video. Alright, so in this video, I wanted to be talking about the new settings that they added to Fortnite, so they added some new settings in, I believe, uh, yesterday or you know whenever you're watching this video for me it was yesterday so i wanted to be talking about the new settings that they added so i've been trying them out for a little bit gave it a few hours of testing and to be honest with you it really isn't that big of a change but i'm still going to go into all the settings in this video and show you guys everything that i use so starting out here's just the front page of everything i use you know i play on pc of course and i have a 240 hertz monitor that i got like a couple weeks ago so i put 240 frames and so here into my next settings I'll just show you guys the bottom real quick. So, you know, I have, you know, sprint by default on. That's a really important one. Tap to search, of course. Uh, everything else is pretty much default. And as you go down, you'll see, you know, turbo build, everything. And one thing that's really important to note is you don't have an option for edit mode aim assist anymore. And that's very, very important. I'll touch on that a little bit later in this video. So here's just the rest of everything that I have. Pretty much everything else is default. I just put on a uh, controller uh, what's it called you auto open doors i just put that on i'll explain exactly why i put that on later as well so here we go into the advanced settings and all you have to do to get this is just go down to use advanced options use switch it from off to on and it'll go from because when you first open this you just have like the first top two and then you switch it from off to on to use advanced settings and there's a whole menu will come up so my uh my controller build and my controller editing is both on a 2x that means double my sensitivity is going to be my building and my editing and so as we go down my horizontal speeds 42 percent and my look look vertical speed is 53 which is a little bit higher it doesn't really affect me too much i think it's actually really helpful so turning on horizontal boost i have it 16 on both and i'll get into a minute exactly what they do but i think 16 is a default as well so i have it on that and so turning boost ramp time, I have that on point two and instant boost when building, I have that off and also explain exactly why I have that off as well. So ADS since uh, ADS look horizontal speed, 12% ADS look vertical speed, 15% and the boost for these, I have them on off for a very good reason. ADS turning boost ramp time, I had that on point two. And then at the bottom, you know, you have just a few more really important settings to keep in mind. So I'm going to go back to the top and go through and explain exactly what each of these do so you guys have a really good understanding. So first I want to talk about the boost and what that does. So boost uh, by default, so if you guys have been playing, I don't really know if, no PC wouldn't have it, but controller players, if you guys, so they added a thing called foot controller and I'll explain what that means. But basically if you just play on the default, you know, you can, you know, fix whatever sensitivity you want. If you didn't enable foot controller at all, then you automatically have the boost, so it's going to feel completely normal. I think it's about 16%. And what boost does, so when you're moving around, and it's really easy to explain it when I'm ADSing, but when you're moving around just a little bit from like left to right, just like a little bit, it doesn't, you, you have your normal sensitivity, but when you go or when you fully press the analog stick, I guess, you know, of course you're aiming one, when you fully press it to the right or left, then you'll get a little bit of boost, it'll turn faster. So this could be very, very helpful for when, you know, you have a player that's really, really close, you don't have to like drag it all the way over. So you have a very slow and precise aim, but if a guy's behind you or maybe 90 degrees, you fully press the stick over and it's going to turn you, it's going to give you, it's going to give you a little bit of a boost and you're going to turn a lot faster. So you're able to lock onto that target a lot quicker. 
and back to what I said about foot controller. So when that came out, it wasn't for Xboxes, for PS4 and PCs. When you enabled that, that basically took off the boost. So I think no boost is also good as well because it has a very consistent aim. You know exactly uh, how long it takes for you to look from one direction to the another. But also, I do like the boost in the sense that when it comes to the close range, it's a lot more accurate. And when you're going to you know fully turn around, it gives you a little bit of boost, so it's going to allow you to turn around just that slight bit faster. I wouldn't put this up too high. If only, if anything, I'd probably. I would say don't go above 20, and you can even take it off if you want, but in between that range is going to be pretty good. And turning boost ramp time, and that's just basically, it's, I feel like it's like a dead zone, and that's just the time it takes, you know, when you fully look over to how, or when the uh, boost activates. I would just keep it on default, I mean, you can mess around with it if you want, but default feels fine, really doesn't make that huge of a difference. I might end up changing it later. And the next thing is instant boost with building. I have this all for a very specific reason. And the reason being is when I'm building, and you guys might see a lot, of course when I'm doing 90s, it really doesn't make that much of a difference. But when I'm building, going for quick edits or anything like that, you'll see a lot of times I'll pull up my shotgun, you know, when I'm going for edits, and because it just, it just feels easier and more fluid. And so that's what I do. And if I had the boost, or auto, I think it's all like auto boost or whatever it's called, when you build, then it'll keep switching sensitivities every single time I pull up my map and try to build. And then when I go out to edit or to, you know, build again and I pull up my shotgun, it's going to mess up my aim. It's going to make it a little bit more all over the place. So unless you have your map all the time and you're going edit edits like that, which I, I honestly suck at, I'm way better at going for edits when I already have, uh, when I already have my shotgun out, just because, I don't know, it's just something I got used to. Maybe it's better, maybe it's not, but it would mess up my aim a lot. So for majority of players, I would recommend definitely having it off so it doesn't throw your sensitivity all over the place when you're trying to edit and you pull out your shotgun or maybe you're going for like a quick shot or anything like that. So next we're talking about the ADS sensitivity. I have 12% and 15% and you can really play around with this if you want. I like to keep mine a lot lower than, I feel like I keep it lower than most players. Some people might play on like a 20%-ish. As you can see, you know, the default, I put a little bit lower. I think vertical speed, it's a little bit higher pretty much on the average about 15. So that's just what I play on. I like it really, really low because it allows me to aim and be very accurate with it when I'm ADSing. So I think that's really important. That's what I like. So going into the uh, next setting, you have vertical boost. I have that off. I definitely recommend having it off when it comes to ADS because there's no reason that you're ADSing you need to like flick around and look like 90 degrees. So I wouldn't recommend having that on. I would definitely have the boost off. So going into the last settings are very important. So look, dampening time. I'm not really sure exactly what it does, I'm guessing it's like a dead zone type of thing again. So I just keep mine on default. You can mess around with it and try it out, but I really haven't seen too much of a difference. Definitely keep this on the way it is. I wouldn't move it to linear. Definitely have on exponential. And so, of course, aim assist, keep that on 100%. And these last settings are really important. So use legacy control settings. When you turn this on, that basically allows you to use the uh, settings you should have. Of course, you have to have, hit apply, but you're going to be able to change the current settings that you have. So you know, here, here I am, if you guys just want to type, everyone will use my settings on this, then of course you can see, you know, my X sensitivity, my Y sensitivity, building, targeting, editing, everything is right there. So when you enable that, and one thing that's really important to notice when you do enable that, you have edit mode aim assist, and when you're in the new settings, you don't have it. So if you guys use edit mode aim assist, that could be a deal breaker because you're not going to have it when you are in the new settings. I don't know if it's just a glitch, but that's just the way it is. And here we have copy legacy settings. So basically, if you had you know your old settings, if you want to have your old settings in the new one, all you have to do is hit copy from legacy, and that's going to copy the settings that you currently have and put them in here so you don't have to change every single thing and try to you know re you know try to you know get your sensitivity right again. You just click on that and it transfers everything over. But like I said, you're not gonna be able to get edit mode aim assist for whatever reason. I don't know if it's a glitch or they purposely did it. So that's the one thing you're not going to have on the new settings, but with the new settings, you do have one added bonus. So when you're ADSing, one thing to note is you can see your bullet drop off. So if you're ADSing at someone and your reticle is red, that means that there are in uh, target distance. So you're not going to have any bullet drop off at all. But if it is white, like it normally is, you know, like what, what it was before, then that means there is going to be bullet drop off. So if your uh, reticle is red, when you're ADSing with your shotgun, your AR or SMG and the target is red, then you're not going to have any bullet drop off at all. So I think that's really cool. And also when you ADS, you have a little bit of a zoom. It's hard to see because, you know, I'm in creative. It's just not that uh, easy to tell. But when you are ADSing, it's going to be a little bit more zoomed in. So being able to see uh, players and also 
aim and hit them is going to be a lot easier from distance. So it is something to keep in mind. And so basically you have a improved aim assist. Like I can say you can't L2 spam anymore, but there is a few benefits to it. Or you go back on the original settings, the you know, legacy settings, and you have edit mode aim assist on. So those are kind of the two things that you want to keep in mind. And with that being said, that's wrap up for this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, if you guys liked it, make sure you guys do drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, turn on my post notifications so you guys are notified for every single new video. And all right, guys, I'll see you next video.